The adventure follows the Loud family to Scotland where they discover that they're descendants of the Scottish royalty. Wait, what? <coughs> the family quickly indulges in the most wish-fulfilling high life ever when they discover their ancestral home is a castle? Okay, I haven't been following the show as much, but was there anything building this up? Like, was there just something in the process? Is this like a, a journey, an arc, or is this just a new thing that they found out? If so, that's pretty out there. Anywho, movie's coming during the summer. We've seen a teaser trailer drop for it, which actually does exactly what a teaser trailer does. It teases. It doesn't tell you much except that it looks the same for the most part. They're just in a different background. And some people are going to tackle this subject and talk about what the Loud House has become recently and things like that. I know there's a lot of Loud House fans, probably some in my audience as well. And I'm going to put that aside for a second. I want to talk to you guys about the tale of two movies. With five seasons, under its belt, The Loud House has cemented itself as one of the more prominent Nicktoons to come within the last decade. Unlike Cartoon Network and Disney, Nickelodeon has kept a certain show around for a long time, and that time started when television was still an important metric to determine where people would view animated media. With the rise of the internet and streaming services getting as varied as condiments, it's common to see shows get a low rating, but it being adjusted to the fact that television, especially things that are animated aren't being watched by millions and millions of people when it premieres. There are YouTube videos that do better day one than certain shows. There are certain animated YouTube videos that do better than animated shows day one. I say this to say that when The Loud House was picking up steam in 2016, 2017, I took note of the fact that The Loud House ratings were so close to SpongeBob's ratings. Sometimes The Loud House would have higher ratings when compared to SpongeBob. Hey guys, you uh, wanna go for a walk? It's a beautiful day out. No thanks, sweetie. We are nice and comfy right here. There's not! Have a nice walk, Lincoln. Now when you think about how people use the Spongebob litmus test to see if any other show could hold their own ground, I would say that The Loud House is a pretty good candidate. Now while Spongebob is a better household name because it's just been around for a longer time, when viewing just this singular metric of ratings, The Loud House does just as good if not better than Spongebob over the course of its run. Given that the show and how it's composed of about 13 regular characters, maybe more if you count the pets and side characters, The Loud House really realistically can make episodes for as long as Spongebob has been making episodes. So we have a contender for Nickelodeon's new thing if they ever wanted to pivot or at least take some resources from the main sponge and put them into the Loud House. Both shows are following in a similar track right now with having spin-offs and movies either planned or released. And it brings me to my point. You have the Loud House movie coming from a very successful show that took off despite the criticisms and doubts along the way and the creator. And it's a no brainer to say that SpongeBob is God tier, but it wasn't that way when it came out, especially when you look at the lineup of 1999. However, there is something very different about these two movies that I think is the most interesting aspect of all of this. One is a theatrical release and one is set for Netflix. Now you may think that that's just a regular thing, but hear me out for a second. Nickelodeon isn't just putting this movie out because they want to. They are a business. They want to see if this is a profitable venture, both in the sense of the Loud House movie and the Loud House franchise as a whole. When they build these universes for these shows, they're looking at ones like Marvel, where a lot of individual heroes or brands, let's call them brands from this point on, within it are very successful. I've got a little surprise prize for you. We're holding a gala at the club tonight to welcome our newest member, you. Wow, thanks old, uh, Celery? Don't mention it. I think you'll fit in splendidly. And remember, it's black tie only. No pants or anything? <laughs> oh, loud! You are a stitch! In that way, Nickelodeon is planting the seeds for things like SpongeBob, The Loud House, and Henry Danger to make an impact five to ten years in through other pieces of media, like spin offs or movies. However, ask yourself this 
How does Nickelodeon know that the Loud House is an indicator of a financial success? How do they know that the Loud House movie would make as much money proportionally today that the SpongeBob movie made back then? Well, yes, Nickelodeon and Netflix did announce a multi-year production deal in which Nickelodeon will both develop stuff based off of existing IP, like the Invader Zim movie, the Rocco's Modern Life movie, but then also new IP, like how they put glitch text on Netflix. But the way that streaming works, you'll never get a direct answer as to what the Loud House movie would actually be at when it comes to financial strength. If you're paying 8 bucks to watch anything that you want, and you just so happen to watch a movie on Netflix, that doesn't exactly say that you would pay $8 plus concessions to watch that same movie that you had available plus everything else on Netflix, right? It's in that sense that the box office success of the Spongebob movie showed that people are willing to pay money for this specific movie rather than a collection of movies and then, you know, they get around to it on their own time. Like the analogy here would be like, if someone gave you the option to pay eight bucks to see anything and everything in the movie theater, then some people or a lot of people, I'd argue, would see certain movies that they wouldn't have paid eight bucks to see just by itself, whether through it being too expensive when you rack up everything or simply not thinking that it's worth that much. So when I see this movie going over to Netflix and I see the deal, I wonder exactly how Nickelodeon is measuring how financially successful this movie and this move will be long term. I know a lot of people didn't like the idea of Disney Plus movies being behind a second paywall, but you can't argue that the people who paid for that second paywall showed Disney that there is a group of people willing to buy this certain thing, specifically that thing. Now ask yourself whether you or whoever pays for Netflix if you have it unless the word R is in your vocabulary. Would you pay that money just for that movie, realistically, if, if that was an option? Would you see it in theaters? Would you get it on DVD? Would you pay for the bonus features, realistically? Would you pay for the specific merch? These are things that the SpongeBob movie had to deal with, that the Loud House movie isn't going to deal with. And I think that's to the Loud House's detriment because I would love to see if its rabid and passionate fan base has a strong buying power. Trick or treat! Oh, aren't you too adorable? Trick or treat! So cute! Trick or treat! Great costumes! Thank you! And that is how it's done! One house, six pieces of candy! I bring all of this up because when you see shows like Glitch Text, they were never given merch. There is no ads put up before them. There is no product placement. There is no products at all. The show was just put on the platform and the internal analytics and benchmarks that we don't see determines where it's at. Now, I'm not saying that these shows make no money. I understand that this business model should work when you consider that if a lot of people keep coming back to Netflix to watch a certain show or a movie, that should be an indicator of what to order or what to make. Make next. However, to give a YouTube analogy, if you see one YouTuber with a million subscribers, but they only get 50,000 views per video, and then you see another YouTuber with 150,000 subscribers, but they only make 90,000 views per video, who do you consider to be more successful currently? My point is that even if you get a lot of people through the door, all that shows you is that you got a lot of people through the door. It doesn't show you that these people would specifically like or want this enough to justify paying for it. I'm still gonna be on the lookout for it and I'll try to cover it if I can. Obviously, I'm also looking forward to the TMNT Netflix movie, but as successful and well-received projects such as Hey Arnold's Jungle Movie, Invader Zim Enter the Florpus, and Rocco's Modern Life Set at Kling were, they are a single venture. They are a single point in their franchise. Nothing Thing more came from it. And maybe that's because the creators didn't want to do anything with it, or because Nickelodeon didn't want to do anything, but it can also be because you can't really tell the way that you could with a theatrical release. A theatrical release is about as direct as you can get to see who would pay for a thing. It's a direct transaction tailored specifically for that thing. Now I understand if movie theaters could be open everywhere, they would. But I bring all of this up to say that I'm curious to see how you would measure the success of this to be, because truth be told, I'm not the biggest fan of The Loud House, but if a lot of people like it, I want it to succeed, like with every other show. I want there to be a lot of projects done with The Loud House. Games, apps, specials, crossovers. You could even throw in a ride at Six Flags, I don't care. If this show is strong enough to compete with SpongeBob, 
then it should be able to work, but only time will tell. Anywho, let me know what you think of all of the things I said here. Are you looking forward to it? Would you personally pay for a DVD of the Loud House movie? After Glitch Text, do you think that Nickelodeon and Netflix have a plan when it comes to animated content? Let me know of all of that and any other thoughts you have in the comments down below, on my subreddit, or on my Discord, alphaj.show slash reddit and discord.gg slash alphajshow. The video will be there and I can't wait to see what you guys think. I can't wait for you guys to come over because we're going to be building out those other two places over the summer. Until then, thank you guys so much for your time. Take care. Alpha out.